Hey guys, this is Madison Star Moon, and this is the most absurd NASA ISS video I've seen to date. I'm going to play it and kind of narrate through it. Hold on, I want to point out that this guy to the left is the biggest fraud. Just listen to what he says. Station, this is Kevin and Sue McCarthy with the Travel Planners Radio Show. How do you hear me? And Kevin and Sue, this is the International um, Space Station, and, and we have you loud and clear, and Mike and I uh, are standing by. <laughs> Welcome to the Travel Planners Radio Show, and we're going to be speaking with uh, Flight Commander Colonel Mike Fink and Flight Engineer Dr. Sandra Magnus of Belleville, Illinois. By the doctor. So the girl on the left is supposed to be a doctor. Well, if she is a doctor, she took a Hippocratic oath to do no harm. Away, very close to our home station, who are now aboard the International Space Station with Mission 18. Sandra, when you were growing up in Belleville and hanging around the Panorama Lanes, perhaps, or the Lincoln Theater, did you look up in the skies like I did as a kid and watch the satellites and say, I want to go there? Did you hear what he just said? Did you watch the satellites as a kid? Watch the satellites? Like, that's an actual thing. And it's not the only time he says that. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and, uh... Well, I remember hanging around. Uh, I gotta rewind this part. This is gonna be so hard for me to do. There's so much in Mission 18. Sandra, when you were growing up in Belleville and hanging around the Panorama Lanes, perhaps, or the Lincoln Theater, did you look up in the skies like I did as a kid and watch the satellites and say, I want to go there? Oh, definitely, and uh, how well I remember hanging around all those places, and I never dreamed it could be possible, and yet here I am on the International Space Station for about four months. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Well, Andy, how long will it be that uh, you're up there before you return to Earth? I Look at the guy to the right. November 14th, try to, and, try to uh, hold a smile on your face to like that. Me up arrives on February 14th, and I think we'll land sometime around the 23rd or 24th of February. So I'll be here for just shy of four months. Her hair like, never moves. Uh, I read somewhere that you may have washed out of flight school. Oh, wait, sorry. I, oh, God. This thing is so chock full. Okay, he's about to talk to the guy, telling the guy that he failed flight school, but then ended up as an astronaut. Watch this shit. On November 14th, and uh, the shuttle that's supposed to pick me up arrives on February 14th, and I think we'll land sometime around the 23rd or 24th. The dude on the right February, kills so I'll me. I'll be here for just shy of four months. Mike, I've got a question. Uh, I read somewhere that you may have washed out of flight school. Have you ever checked in with some of your old buddies in that class and gone, nah, 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 nah? No, that's the nice thing about uh, getting a little bit older and a little bit more mature. And uh, we're all near the end of our Air Force careers. You heard that? Of us who, Sorry. Uh, who was in that. Uh, that's the nice thing about uh, getting a little bit older and a little bit more mature. And uh, we're all near the end of our Air Force careers. And each one. We're all near the end of our Air Force careers of us who uh, who was in that flight training class have succeeded in our own way we've all found our niche some went off to work for the airline some are still in the service and and others are, are in business or elsewhere i'm happy to be here easy frankenstein on the left okay she also looks like dracula in the original dracula series where he had his arms up like that so with the international space station and the reason why i mentioned that i failed out of flight school is because you know that's life for you and, <laughs> and for you know, arms how many times you have uh, troubles it's always an opportunity to find some a uh, different way to get where you want to go and okay so this dude failed out of flight school but somehow was accepted to be in the alleged most prestigious and scientific uh, rare career I mean, chosen after he failed out of flight school to be an astronaut? Okay. Certainly worked for me. 
Yeah, it worked for you all right. Mike, I understand you have a little acting in your background, too. Oh, uh, he's an actor. Last episode of Star Trek Enterprise. So, are you a Trekkie? No, but he's an actor. Well, I certainly enjoy the, the series. I enjoy the show. Um, all the different various incarnations. And I understand there's a movie coming out. Frankenstein arm. What I really like about Star Trek, it, it gives us a future to look forward to. Much like the International Space Station, you can see people from all different countries working together. And uh, that's exactly what we have up here. We have me and Sandy from the U.S. Uh, Yuri's from Russia. Soon Koichi will be with us, and he's from Japan. And that's what I really like about the International Space Station. There's no question from what we have seen as we did our research for our interview that there's a great deal of camaraderie still within the entire astronaut crew. You had a Christmas dinner, I understand, that Sandy oh, actually oh, just, cooked. Just check take, this out. Either one of you take this question, but uh, how is the food aboard the space station? Is it any better than we have on... How is the food aboard the space station that's supposed to be 250 miles above Earth where well, they have no real way to get food back and forth in any type of standard way. I mean, what, do they send some rocket up there that somehow connects to this thing that's going 17,000 miles an hour and brings them fresh produce once every week or two weeks or something? Watch what she says. It's so stupid. From the airlines? Well, yeah, actually, I think it is much better than what we have on the airlines. We've got a huge group of people worldwide working on food for us, and they do a really good job. And uh, the reason why I did... The guy on the right cannot stop smiling with that look. They make him smile like that to look like he's happy. Try to hold a smile like that on your face. See how long you, you can naturally hold a smile like that. It starts to hurt, okay? Some cooking was just to present some variety to our diet. You know, the food's great, but after 16 days, we kind of repeat, and so it's fun to kind of experiment. And okay, sorry. I know it's going to be like this the whole time. She says after 16 days, we begin to repeat. So they eat something different every uh, up to 16 days, and then they start over. I Who the hell eats something different every 16 days? I mean, I eat the same thing every day. And she's complaining that, oh, after 16 days of having them, something different, now, now they're going to do this. Watch your shit. I'm sorry. Well, I'll take, let either one of you take this question, but uh, how is the food aboard the space station? Is it any better than we have on the airlines? Well, yeah, actually, I think it is much better than what we have on the airlines. We've got a huge group of people worldwide working on food for us, and they do a really good job. And uh, the reason why I did some cooking was just to present some variety to our diet. You know, the food's great, but after 16 days, we kind of repeat, and so it's fun to kind of experiment and change. She said after 16 days, they repeat. So they have 16 days of new food every day? That's half a month of food. <laughs> I eat the same thing every day. The flavors and textures a little bit. Sandy, I understand that the tortilla... Yeah, thanks to Sandy. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, Sandy, I And by understand... the way, did you notice that there's absolutely no delay at all? Zero delay. She talked to me immediately. There would be some type of delay. And that the tortilla is a basic uh, food group in space. Could you elaborate on that? As a matter of fact, it is because, you know, we can't have bread up here because bread creates crumbs and crumbs on the ground, you know, on the earth, they just fall to the oh. floor and you've got a problem. Well, here, if you have crumbs, they can... Matter of fact, it is because, you know, we can't have bread up here because bread creates crumbs and crumbs on the ground, you know, on the earth, they just fall to the floor and they're not a problem. Well, here, if you have crumbs, they can, you know, fly around, get in your hair, get in your clothes, get in your eyes. It's really quite a pain. And so uh, NASA came up with the idea of flying tortillas, which, of course, don't create crumbs, but they're a great platform to put anything on. As you probably read in my journal, peanut butter, uh, shrimp Nobody's cocktail, read your journal. mashed potatoes, honey, applesauce, pudding and straw. You can put anything on a tortilla. It's really Look great. Look at his face. <laughs> so, would you explain to oh, our God. why duct tape is a part of the kitchen crew? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, think about what happens when you cook in your kitchen. You know, you, you gather all your tools together, your knives, your forks, your spoons, your rolling pins, and everything. This guy to the right is so hilarious. 
I mean, have you guys been watching his face? I'm sorry, but I've seen this video over and over again because I keep finding new stuff every time. He is like insane. He cracks me up. Counter, and it stays there so nicely because gravity's holding it down. But when I'm cooking up here, I have to <laughs> He looks like a robot statue. Uh, Ziploc bags I use as my mixing bowls and, of course, the knife and things like that. But I don't have gravity to help me out. So I, if I lay out some duct tape with the sticky side up, I can put everything down on the duct tape and it stays put. And I'm not chasing my utensils and my kitchen tools all over the service module. Well, I think it's time we put in a couple questions that were asked by an eight-year-old, Nathan Pritz, from Hayworth, uh. Illinois, and his sister, Rachel Pritz, 12 years old, of Hayworth, Illinois. Nathan wants to know, Mike, have you seen any aliens up there? Oh, watch this shit. You know, that's a really good question. In fact, that's one of the most fundamental questions that we human beings want to know. Are we are we alone out there? So, of course, even eight-year-olds are, are wondering. And uh, we're only 250 miles above the surface, so we're not too much farther or closer to, to uh, any different stars or planets than, uh, than you all are uh, down on the... Okay. He just said we're 250 miles, uh, but we're only 250 miles above the Earth. So we're no more closer to any stars or anything than you are on Earth. No, you're 250 miles closer. In fact, that's one of the most fundamental questions that we human beings want to know. Are we are we alone out there? So, of course, even eight-year-olds are, are wondering. And uh, we're only 250 miles above the surface, so we're not too much farther or closer to, to uh, any different stars or planets than uh, than you all are uh, down, on, down on the surface. So I haven't seen any aliens uh, up here at all, but it would be really neat someday if we could meet some. Rachel would ask, uh, what was it like since you've been in space before, flying for your first time in space, Mike? Oh, God. Oh, did you see the glitch? Well, uh... Sorry, I didn't mean to scream. Watch. Uh, what was it like since you've been in space before, flying for your first time in space, Mike? Watch the glitch. Oh! Well, uh... The first time was uh, was really amazing. Everything was new, and uh, it was it was uh, quite exciting. It was m living my dream. The, the second time is is even more better because I feel like I know. It's even, even more, more better. So we have astronauts that are saying it's even more better to be up here. I've failed out of flight school, but now I'm I'm an astronaut, and it's more better. Sorry. Space, Mike. Well, uh, the first time was uh, was really amazing. Everything was new, and uh, it was it was uh, quite exciting. It was m living my dream. The, the second time is is even more better because I feel like I know <laughs> even more what I'm doing, and uh, I know you what just to don't expect. Know how to speak English. So both times are, are are very special, but just very different. It's and more I'm, better. I'm really glad to have a chance to fly again, just like Sandy. I alluded to my childhood uh, growing up just about 40 miles from where Sandy grew up that we would <gasps> it just stand in the backyard as a child and watch the satellites go by and wonder... What the fuck is he talking about? We would stand in the backyard and watch the satellites go by. No one on Earth has ever stood in their backyard and watched satellites go by. And he's acting as this... As if this is about talking about clouds. When you were a kid, did you talk about, oh, that cloud looks like an elephant? Did you ever used to watch the clouds? Uh, they're about to talk about chemtrails to watch. I alluded to my childhood uh, growing up just about 40 miles from where Sandy grew up, that we would stand in the backyard as a child and watch the satellites go by and wonder what it was like. But now we're hearing talk of uh, the space shuttles being... Uh, well, sold and a new generation of flight coming to us and more moon missions, etc. As well as Virgin Atlantic and some commercial people talking about touristic, private, civilian space travel. How long do you think it'll be before uh, Sue and I can uh, buy a ticket and join you up there? 
Well, it's definitely a good sign that we have all these commercial companies trying to get into the space business and, and bringing people into low Earth orbit. That will allow NASA the ability to move forward to the moon and Mars, because we're supposed to be on the front edge as a government agency. That's what we're supposed to do. Government the agency. New and of course, we still have the basic physics. Of Listen to her. You've got to pay attention. Well, it's definitely a good sign that we have all these commercial companies trying to get into the space business and, and bringing people into low Earth orbit. That will allow NASA the ability to move forward to the moon and Mars, because we're supposed to be on the front edge as a government agency. That's what we're supposed to do is break the new ground. And of course, we still have the basic physics of getting to space flight, which is what drives the cost. And so unfortunately, I'm not sure when the cost is going to get low enough uh, for you know ordinary people like us to afford it. Um, but it's kind Coming. It's just a matter of time. It's definitely coming. If you look at how the aviation industry developed, it was the same kind of a thing. It started off as sort of a, uh, a very small group of people, and now it's just like getting on a bus when you get on an airplane, and uh, space flight will be like that someday as well, but I can't really tell you when. Sandy and Mike, I want to know, is it fact or is it fiction? We've been to China. The Great Wall is huge. It's beautiful. Can you or can you not see it from outer space? Well, that's one of the myths uh, that, are, that are out there. We can see so many things from space. We can, we can see uh, big cities like Chicago and Indianapolis, and, and I think we can even see Belleville from up here. We can see roads. We can see airports. We can even see uh, you know, the, air, the contrails of airplanes. Oh! And, and I think we can even see Belleville from up here. We can see roads, we can see airports, we can even see uh, you know, the, air, the contrails of airplanes. We even see the pyramids with our naked eye. But we haven't seen the, the Great Wall of China. And the reason why it's made out of local material so it doesn't offer much contrast. And that's why we can see most things is because they stand out from their background environment. And so far, none of us have seen the Great Wall of China. Well, Commander Fink and Flight Engineer Sandra Magnus, thank His name is Commander Fink. Thank you for being on the Travel Planner Show. For our listeners, go to NASA TV on nasa.gov. You will find more information and live video and more information than you can ever assume. Thank you very much for being on the Travel Planner Show. And thank you so much for having us, and please say hello to everyone in the Belleville area for me. I'll be up there to visit someday. And Bob Heil returns the thoughts. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WBGZ radio portion of the event. Please take... Did I lie? Was that not the... Oh, God. Just so much wrong with it. And I didn't even go over the fact that, you know, about her hair never, ever moving. When he does that flip out of nowhere for no reason... His leg knocks her hair, and it still doesn't move. Her hair would have been flowing from the wind. I didn't talk about the fact that they're on harnesses, so you can't even see their feet. I mean, I could go on and on, but it was more of what they said and the interviewer being in on it. I hope you guys enjoyed it.